Good morning, Dr. Joseph. It's a real pleasure to be with you today and I thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to spend some time to discuss with us how pivotal the university here has been in the whole thrust of Dominica and its Creole heritage and sustenance culture. So if you could just introduce yourself and tell us just in a, as by way of introduction, how you came to be involved in the work here at the university around the Creole language. Mm -hmm. My name is Dr. Kim Moon Joseph and I'm the head of UWI Open Campus in Dominica. Um, primarily, my passion for Creole and Creole, Creole heritage stems from uh, my own background and where I'm from. I'm from the southeastern village in Dominica called La Plaine and we are very much Creole people there. In fact, in our day-to-day -day operations in that village, we hardly ever speak English at all. Mm. So I was very surprised as a young girl of 9, 10, moving to Roseau for the latter part of my primary school education into my secondary school education, and noticing that not many people in Roseau spoke Creole at all. Um, and so many children in my class couldn't understand a word of Creole. So many of my jokes had to be, you know, curtailed because they just couldn't understand what I was saying. So I would say that that is where my real love of Creole came from. Um, working here at the University of the West Indies Open Campus, we really got our first major interest in Creole and the expansion of the Creole language and, and its formalization really when my program officer and I decided that we wanted to legitimize the language, if you will, and we wanted to offer courses and programs about Creole and in Creole so that Dominicans would be able to participate and those who could speak just a little bit but not enough or nothing at all or who could speak for years but couldn't read and write in Creole mm -hmm. would have gotten the opportunity to um, come to UWI and get a certificate at the end of the program. Like I said, we wanted to legitimize Creole by stamping UWI on Creole. Can you tell us when your program actually started? What year you started doing the certificate programs? And is it long term or short term? We started doing the first course, which is Fundamentals of Conversational Creole, in 2017. Mm -hmm. And our tutor at that time was Mrs. Sonia Akpa, mm -hmm. who has been very instrumental as a linguist in the promotion of the Creole language. And she has worked with several committees and organizations to really get Creole into its rightful place in the educational system in Dominica. So she was quite pleased to come on board and be our main tutor for the fundamentals of conversational Creole. And this course, primarily as a six-week course, okay. really gave people the opportunity to be introduced to the language and to get the opportunity to be able to say the basic things that would give them a, a sort of conversational ability to, to, just, to just talk to someone else, mm -hmm. um, to get directions if they needed it, to be able to know how to say how they are feeling on a particular day, what's the weather like, you know, those kinds of things as an introduction to the language itself. And what was also wonderful about that course that she did in the six weeks, she used the opportunity to focus on social aspects of the Creole language as well. So, for example, she did situations with them where they got dressed up and pretended that they were at a market. Oh, the funny. students enjoyed that. Um, they listened to songs and they were able to sing songs. They wrote stories of their own. I remember there was a lady who told me that her husband was from India and she had come to pick him up from class one day and there he was in the car and they're driving home and he's singing, was there knees away, mama party day. So she's saying to him, what did you know hear that song? He said, oh, we're doing proverbs today in my class and so my teacher played that song. You know, so she really tried her best to make it as fun as possible for the students uh, so they could get an appreciation for the language. Mm -hmm. So that's how we started in 2017 and that was just before the Hurricane Maria. Um, in 2018, we took on more students, but what we did with that class is we included students who lived overseas. Mm -hmm. 
So she did a sort of blended approach where there were students physically in the classroom and those students joining from New York and Canada who were Dominicans living in the diaspora, many of them who had had relatives who spoke fluent Creole, mm -hmm. but it was always a hidden language, as you know, yes. a language to, to gossip and, and to talk about the children themselves <laughs> without them knowing what the parents and grandparents were saying. And so these people were coming out and saying, I want to learn to speak Creole mm -hmm. um, so that I can understand what it is they've been saying about me all these years. So that was a good thing because we were able to connect with the people who couldn't physically be here mm -hmm. while we had a group in the classroom mm -hmm. as well. And she continued to be dynamic, introducing new things so that those who were joining via teleconference would be able to participate oh, even if they were not physically yes. there. Yes. So that worked out well as well. Um, that continued into last year, 2019. And then this year, 2020, with the onslaught of COVID, everybody had to be by a teleconference. Yeah. So even if people were living in Dominica, it didn't make a difference. We were not having face-to-face -face courses. Um, Mrs. Appa could not be with us at that time, and so we hired Mrs. Delia Coffee Weeks, okay. who herself is a fantastic tutor. And she was able to do um, some of the same things that Mrs. Akpa had done with the class in terms of group work and projects and videos and songs and so on. But she had to really think outside of the box mm -hmm. because nobody mm -hmm. was face to face. Mm -hmm. And um, she did that very, very, very well. And the students loved and appreciated it. What time of the year does that program run? Just for our listeners, in case people are hearing us and the, would like to follow. The program is usually in summer one. So we start that in May and we're finished by the first week in July, typically. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And is it in the evenings or daytime? Yes. All of our courses in terms of continuing and professional education take place in the evenings. Mm -hmm. So between 6 and 7.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. Twice a week. Yeah, I'm just thinking of possibilities of um, really maybe even collaborating on a different mm -hmm. level with my university mm -hmm. and having something that could really, really serve a wider audience. So mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's a lot of potential mm -hmm. for such work, and I'm quite pleased to know that the diaspora has mm -hmm. been involved. And now that I know that, I didn't know that at all. It, it opens up doors for us to maybe collaborate on a wider level with the diaspora. So all the people in the diaspora listening to us, I think that's going to be exciting mm -hmm. for them because we get, I get a lot of um, um, requests mm -hmm. following in the language. Mm -hmm. so I'm really happy that we can present ourselves in Dominica mm -hmm. as the center for best practice, which is what our project is about. So maybe that leads us nicely into that question mm -hmm. in terms of Dominica as an island and the work that we do in and around our culture, our dress, our language. I know you are very, very passionate as well about the dress. Mm -hmm. I just wonder how possible in your own mind or your vision you think it is for us to position ourselves as a center of best practice for mm -hmm. Creole culture. And do you see a role, a wider role for the university in that regard? Mm -hmm. I have always been impressed with our size in comparison to what we have been able to do. And I'm speaking both in terms of Dominica and in terms of the University of the West Indies Open Campus Dominica. When we started this program, we weren't even sure if people would be interested in participating in, this, in these courses. And what we have found this year, to our surprise, St. Lucia mm -hmm. called mm. and the Open Campus site there said, we want to do this program. Mm -hmm. We are going to need you all to walk us through what we are mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. And we had our tutor, Mrs. Weeks, work with their tutor mm -hmm. um, and really walk that person through. Yeah. So we are, even without even trying sometimes, a center of best practice already, yeah. you know? Yeah. And now that their program was a success, they are looking forward to more. What do you all have? What are you all doing? Mm -hmm. Can we collaborate? Mm -hmm. So I think that that is very important. Now, mm -hmm. in terms of, of, of other things, like you mentioned, the dress, the food, because there are other aspects of Creole culture besides, besides the language itself. I think that one of the main ways that we have demonstrated that we are ready 
to become a center of best practice is through our conference. Mm -hmm. We have had the first installment of that conference in 2019, last mm -hmm. year in August. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was a very important conference uh, for Dominica and for the University of the West Indies as well. Conferences, by their very definition, provide the opportunity for scholars and researchers who have been working in a particular area to be able to share what they have learned with the wider public. It was an amazing conference, and it was a conference of a difference because at the end of it all, there was space for members of the audience to be able to participate mm -hmm. and give their ideas for the way that they want um, Creole culture to be represented in our society by the people who make our policies and even by the university itself. I thought that that was really, really something special and unique. And, um, you know, as a, an aspect of its own, it is truly important for us now to be able to piggyback on those efforts. We mm -hmm. can't lose the conference, you know. We can't have just one conference and end it. Mm -hmm. um, as, a, as a method of best practice, it's important for us to continue to engage scholars because we had people from all over the world. Yeah all over the world coming and others who wanted to come couldn't because they had other engagements at the time. They're waiting for the opportunity to be, to be invited yeah. as well yeah. in future conferences and to collaborate on future work and future efforts. And I think that it gives us the opportunity to find those Creole practitioners wherever they are and those Creole researchers wherever they are. And what was the joy of it for me was how much we have in common. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of the same struggles. We have a lot of the same triumphs. So I'm listening to presentations by our colleagues in Guadeloupe and Martinique, and it is like, but we're going through the same thing here, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they have points and areas where they have been very successful, and they are able to share that with us. And even in Dominica now, while we are going through various parts in our culture and our history, for instance, we're introducing Creole in schools now, mm -hmm. um, which is a tremendous feat for us because we've been talking about it for years and have not been able to break ground in that regard. And we finally were able to do so last year. We are able to now share our own experiences with them. These are things we cannot, we cannot lose these things. So mm -hmm. it is very important to preserve mm -hmm. and to be able to have this sort of assembling of ideas, yeah. you know, yeah. where we can talk about best practices. And, and it, it just um, brought my attention to another point that really thrilled me during the conferences and even when we had our own conference in the UK to understand that Seychelles carried their House of Parliament in mm -hmm. Creole. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is one of the policy positions mm -hmm. maybe we can mm -hmm. uh, lead on mm -hmm. and as a sense of good practice, maybe offer the parliamentarians uh, uh, their own little short courses in Creole yes. so, so they can take it to Parliament in mm -hmm. a very, you know, formal and professional way mm -hmm. because we know the Creole language can be a little tricky sometimes <laughs> so we would want to give them the right words mm -hmm. to use mm -hmm. in Parliament mm -hmm. to maintain the discourse and the mm -hmm. level at which so here's another opportunity mm -hmm. for the university to really think of maybe key places in our society where we can position ourselves as a really hub of information and knowledge and my big question to you is is the university ready for that challenge? Because one of the things we are considering from this whole Creole project of positioning ourselves as a center of best practices, who would be some of our key leading stakeholders? Mm -hmm. So my, my question to you is, do you see a real central place for the university there in collaboration with the Ministry of Culture and KEC mm -hmm. in working going forward? I think that the university is ready. Um, we are small at the open campus site in Dominica, but we are not all there is, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. We do have the linguistics departments um, at the brick and mortar campuses mm -hmm. who work with Quayol as well. Mm -hmm. And we do have experts around the Caribbean who have UE affiliation. So it's not just Dominica in its, in its small sense, but, but there is this network. 
mm -hmm. you know, of people who are affiliated and associated with the university who are willing and will be willing to come on board. Mm -hmm. But as for us at the Dominica site, we've never been afraid of a challenge. You know, we really believe that we need to be innovative, we need to move with the times, and we need to provide opportunities for access, mm -hmm. um, both access for our people who want formal education and access for people who want to do research and want to be engaged in research. So I think we are very ready and, and, and capable of being pioneers in this effort um, at our, our Creole culture being given the place where it needs to be. Yeah. And I just remember that there was a, a recent event here for Creole Month. There was a lecture. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. For the past eight years, um, the UWI Open Campus Dominica has been engaged in mounting the Eoli Bla Memorial Lecture. And that is done in collaboration with the Ministry of Culture for the work of the Division of Culture. And the focus of the lecture really is on themes of culture and heritage in honor of Eoli Bla, our first premier. As we all know, he had been very instrumental in the creation of National Day, which was later replaced by our independence, of course. And he really wanted Dominicans to celebrate their culture and their Dominicanness during that time. And um, what we have in late September, October, and all the way through to the first week in November was really his vision, mm -hmm. you know, of celebration of who we are as a people. And it is true because I have friends in other countries and colleagues in other countries in the Caribbean, nobody does cultural celebration like Dominicans can. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody else mm -hmm. has that. And when people come here and they see what we do every year, they are really impressed. And that's why I always think that it's important for us as a people to just remember that even though we are small, there are wonderful things that are happening here. So the lecture has really been a focus on those themes in his memory. And over the years, we have had fantastic fantastic work from researchers and people who are prepared to come and talk about issues in terms of culture and heritage. This year we were fortunate to have with us Honorable Alex Boyd Knight, Speaker Emerita, and her topic was traditional cuisine. And she spent over an hour really educating Dominicans on various aspects of our, of our traditional cuisine. And that was excellent by all accounts. Um, again, um, COVID has limited us in a lot of ways. We typically have this lecture face-to-face -face and we get quite a crowd. Dominicans have really been participating in our lectures each year. Um, we have around 100, 120 people who show up and we still have to have live broadcasts. You know, this year, because of COVID, we had to focus on doing it um, virtually. Mm -hmm. And the response was just Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So while we're thinking, oh dear, we wonder how it's going to turn out. We wonder if people will turn into listen. There's TV that they can watch. There's friends that they can be hanging out with. No. And the responses are still coming in from people um, who want to just give their congratulations and want to say that they were listening and so on. So that is another aspect of cultural development and promotion that UWI Open Campus has been able to do. Well, I was at that event myself, and I have been asked for the recipes. So before I leave here, I you need them. to give me so, oh, you send them I to me. I send them by email okay, to, to everybody in our yes, database, yes, and I can excellent. send it to you again. People are, mm -hmm. no matter if I have it, that's fine. People are asking for those recipes. So mm -hmm. it was really, really a very um, impactful yeah. exercise, and which is one of the things I think is important for the work that we do mm -hmm. as a center of best practice going forward because people are looking at what impact mm -hmm. is the work that mm -hmm. is coming out of this project going to be. So I'm, I'm pretty excited, mm -hmm. I must say, as we end this interview to really collaborate with the University of the West Indies and to congratulate you mm -hmm. and your staff on supporting the project and being such an influential organization in all things Creole, especially in educating our mm -hmm. people. So I'll just give you an opportunity now to have the closing remarks. Mm -hmm. So like I said before, for us, um, we are always looking for different ways and opportunities to really show what Dominica can do. 
So for now, in terms of the Creole heritage, we have the course, um, Conversational Creole. We have the lecture series, mm -hmm. which deals with themes of culture and heritage. And we are partners in the conference, the conference which yeah. will happen every other year. Mm -hmm. And we are still looking for opportunities mm -hmm. to engage people. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking the other day, my program officer and I, and we were talking about what about um, exchanges, cultural exchanges yeah. between yeah. Guadeloupe yeah. and Martinique yeah. and Dominica. Yeah. And there are several parts in Trinidad, like Paramin. And the UK, don't speak forget Creole. Us. You can come across <laughs> and you can come across. You know, that we, we want to examine opportunities for development and, and, and cultural exchanges where people can meet and, and really see that in this whole human thing that we are doing, that we really are more similar. Mm -hmm. that we are different in yeah. this world. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, with the discussions that came out of that same conference, mm -hmm. there's the appetite for, for the collaboration among the Creole-speaking yeah. countries. So there's great potential with, mm -hmm. with us here in Dominica as a center of best practice in traveling to Seychelles, or we mm -hmm. have a team moving around mm -hmm. at different times of the year, mm -hmm. exchanging, visiting each other over conferences mm -hmm. and for Creole Festival and mm -hmm. some of the other festivals. So I think the future is bright. I think so too. And I'm, I'm really happy to be partnering with yourself and your team, and we look forward to great things ahead. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You're